it's time to relax with the offspring. <clears throat> we are here for another podcast. That's right. Still here, man. Still here. It's almost after, like we're a real band. After all these weeks. Yeah. <laughs> this is almost like a real podcast now. Uh, yeah. What's going on with you, Black Ball? What obnoxious thing did you do li- lately? Just the fucking hockey game, man. That the was, hockey game. Yeah, just... You're in pig heaven right now, yeah. aren't you, with the hockey yeah, game? I, yeah. That was so much fun. Yeah. yeah so that's cool. The Anaheim Ducks asked us to have a an offspring night, I guess, a, a collaboration, and, right? Because it's 30 years. This year marks 30 years of the Anaheim Ducks and 30 years of Smash. And so we did a, a collab with them. And they set up like a record store part yeah. of their of nice. their um, Sick, yeah their right? their store the duck store at the uh, Honda Center and so we had like our own little corner uh, we had little pucks and and records for sale and and t shirts right jersey although they screwed up my jersey like everyone had a jersey with their name printed on it but yeah. they they printed mine up noodle. Noodle. Instead of noodles. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. He doesn't want to be called Noodle. No, I hate that. I hate uh, that. It, but it was know. it was really cool. It was called a come out and play night. You know, they thought yeah. of everything. They it did. was fun. I got to drive the Zamboni. Yeah. <laughs> drive I did. Zamboni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Life size cool. li- life size cardboard so cutout. Yes. yes. No, they they did it up, man, and it was so much fun. Uh yeah, it, you know, I mean, getting to drop the the ceremonial <clears> puck, <throat> uh, you guys did. I got to you know, go press the take flight button to kind of yeah. start the game, man. I, I lo- I'm a big hockey guy, so I was just totally like head over hill. That, and that's why I, I didn't get too fucked up at the beginning because I, <laughs> I wanted to pace myself because I wanted to kind of <laughs> sure. remember. But by it, the end, you know, by the end, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I was feeling You're it pretty like, good, feeling man. Good. I was feeling good, but <laughs> yeah, that would. I mean, they did such a great job, you yeah. know, with, with it all. So you were yeah, dancing yeah. with the mascot by the dancing, end. Dancing, I, I, oh, I was dry humping. I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot there were kids in the room. I'm dry over there humping just, Wild yeah. Wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot there were kids time. there. Yeah. yeah, you know, we just got caught up in the moment. You I know, just, we just I, one thing led to another. Next thing you know, I just kind of grinding, grinding. Oh, it was fun, yeah. Man. But yeah, that was a good time. Well, we're very lucky to be joined today by legendary drummer yes adrian thank you so much for coming out today hello gentlemen adrian Enjoy young us. of no doubt is here today hi. we're very yeah. excited hi, hi, hi. Yeah. and others hi. and others yeah you know a little yeah. bit about anaheim yeah so yeah. a little bit yeah. yeah oc guy tragic kingdom yeah. you know yeah. there's so much to talk about i don't even know where to start but that's kind of the idea of this podcast we don't really have a okay. an agenda you can start well there you is want, an orange but. county thing because we used to record at the same time Studio for our demos. I was going to talk about bands. this. Yeah, yeah. Jim Dotson. Yeah, South Coast Recording. Oh, South that. Coast. Oh, shit. Yeah. South Coast. Recording that's right. Place. I forgot. Yeah. See, there's all these I didn't connections. know you guys recorded there. I had forgotten. Yeah. You did. Yeah. I, yeah, wow. Yeah, this guy Jim owned a, a, a studio. He ran it himself. And yeah. he charged us back then. It was like ten bucks an hour. It was really, cheap. really cheap. Super cheap. I think eventually and, uh, we were up to fifteen. So, yeah. <laughs> so he had to raise his prices. Yeah, but, yeah. But so we went there every chance we got. Every time we could save up thirty or forty bucks, we yeah. could knock out a demo Same. song in a couple hours yeah. and stuff. I just heard from Jim a couple days ago. He's going to be in town. Did you? He doesn't live here anymore. Yeah. But yeah. But uh, what a cool spot because it really, I don't know how it was for you, but it really gave us a place where we could kind of learn how to record and develop that songwriting Absolutely. process. Yep. Oh, yeah. That we couldn't have done otherwise because you have to be able to record and hear it back and all that. Yeah. So we were a lot better at recording than we were at playing live well. for a long time. <laughs> now maybe it's catching up. I still but, am, Dexter. But <laughs> Give me enough takes, I can get it right. Uh, <clears throat> but what was your, we were there... A lot. Like, you recorded a whole album or two albums there, I think? Well, we intended to record, like, our first record there, um, and we weren't signed, so it was we were all just doing it ourselves. And this is probably, I guess, 90, 91, somewhere in right. there, yeah. I think. Yeah, we did ours in 89, our first and, record. And yeah. uh, um, during that process, or after we recorded it, we actually got signed to Interscope in 91 i think so we never released the stuff we recorded there oh all right yeah. yeah but it like you said it was a great learning experience how to record yeah and you know we were pretty green and young at it and we were kind of the opposite we were better live than we were at recording so it was good for us to kind of get our recording chops right. yeah. that way right yeah <clears throat> we couldn't find a place to play for us um i don't know maybe because it was more of a punk thing that Clubs, they didn't want to have bands like us yeah, play yeah. and stuff so yeah we kind of ended up in the studio more often than not 
But um, so you have a, a whole album that you finished, and you didn't even re-record some of the songs when you got signed to Interscope. We did. We had, some of it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I remember Jim playing some of it for me one time when I was in there and going, "Wow, man, these guys are going to be huge." <laughs> I remember, we didn't think that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we played. We were both rehearsing at the same spot. We didn't. We usually rehearsed in around around Orange County. Well, this part of Orange County. But one time we were out in Fullerton and and you guys were rehearsing. I remember going. We're leaking and looking in your window, going, "Oh man, no doubts here." You know. And <laughs> and, uh, and all of a sudden we see. I think it was Tony looking on us too. You know. We both were kind of bubbling up around the same time. Yeah. <clears throat> we were kind of crossing paths here and there, right? Mm-hmm. Like another one that I remember that was really cool is that things had happened for us in 94. You guys was 95 or 96, I think, right? It was our Tragic Kingdom came out in October of 95, but it really didn't start to gain traction until early 96. 96, okay. right? Yeah, right. So we were we got offered to play this show that was basically put on by a ski resort. It was like a private ticket, right? I think it was in Salt Lake City or something. It was at that, and, that Salt Palace, wasn't it? Yes. And it was going to be yeah. us and No Doubt and Sublime. We all played the same show wow. once in 1995. Oh, yeah. Things hadn't happened for you guys or for Sublime so much quite yet. Yeah. But So it was just funny to look at that bill and go, wow, what a monster bill. How, cool, yeah, right? how cool that was. Totally. Can you imagine yeah. if we did that now? It's a stadium like, lineup dude, now. Dude, totally, like, right? Yeah, so like... fly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. In fact, I think Gwen was handing out cassettes. She was like... Really wanting wow. people to hear here, check out our new demo, right? Yeah. <laughs> Backstage. <laughs> but yeah, it's so, so those funny. Are, those are the days of grinding. Yeah. 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 For, for sure. sure. Whatever, whatever you can do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Making our own t shirts, all that kind of stuff. Recording. Mailing our... mailing list parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we were so dumb that we would have mailing list parties writing back, you know, the whatever few fans we had at the time, but we didn't have wait, like we would lick the stamps. Oh, right. And so your tongue would get all fucking parched and <laughs> weird. And then someone came up with a genius idea of like, hey, take a sponge, wet it, right. and then you could put the stamp on that and then put it on the envelope right, right, before yeah, there yeah, was yeah, self-adhesive yeah. stamps. Wow. How we funny. once glued together our own record covers because we had them printed up, a thousand of them, and it was going to cost more to have them folded and glued. And we're like, we can't afford that. So yeah. we, <laughs> we had them stamped out. Them. We did the, yeah, the folding and gluing ourselves. Folding and gluing. Yeah. The amount of care, right? It yeah. just went into the whole it, thing. Oh, we would yeah. get drunk while we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, we'd have a party over at either your was, house or James' house. there, you know? It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, we, for we, sure. we, we care about our band so much yeah. that we, we whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. And it's exciting to hold something like, wow, this is it's like a real record, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That was I remember when we finally got Smash or Ignition out. Um we got our first CDs. Epitaph made some CDs. That was mind-blowing. And, and, and being in your backyard, drinking yeah. beer by the pool and putting on we had the 5 CD disc changer, putting like <laughs> Social Distortion, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Offspring and a couple <laughs> others and it would come up and play in between that. It was almost like yeah, man, we're like a real band. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> these other CDs and the changer, right? Yeah. <laughs> so rad. Yeah, the, so funny. the impression that you're up there with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's you know, right. there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this and say, "What is a CD changer?" <laughs> oh yeah, I know, right? Yeah, totally. They're googling it right kids. now. Yeah, like, yeah. It actually, right now. <laughs> our kids. Yeah, for sure. Oh man. <laughs> Love. Well, but yeah, there's something very special about that that ride when you start and it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing yeah. for so long, and then it really turns into something. And how was that for for you? Because you experienced something very similar. It seems like it just it didn't feel real because it wasn't expected. And you know, our first record Interscope didn't have any kind of national traction. We didn't get any radio play, and it took so long to make Tragic Kingdom. Um, Mainly because the label was kind of staving us off, and you know, the, the they would say, "Okay, uh, we found a cheap studio. Can you guys come up this weekend?" And then, like a month later, same kind of thing. And so, right. it, it just that process for Tragic Kingdom went on for like two and a half years. That's how you recorded Tragic Kingdom. Yeah. Like that? Okay. So yeah. you know, in between our jobs and school and the label's willingness right. to to put us in the studio, and um, so we were very skeptical. You know, this was going to amount to much of anything. Right, right. And, already, you know, you know, once burned, twice shy, right? You know, yeah. The first record. And, and also, you know, in the mid 90s, K Rock was being dominated by you guys, Green Day, Nirvana, 
Alice in Chains, heavier bands. Yeah. And it, it was hard to envision a path for No Doubt um, to be on modern rock radio. So the whole thing just didn't seem real. Right. And then when it started to happen, it was very, very surprising. Huh. What, what was the first single? Just a Girl? Was mm-hmm. that the first one to go? Yeah. Yep. And then you guys had a bunch to follow it up with. And it's funny, he's saying, like, it didn't seem like the landscape was right for us, but when you look at it now, it, lo- it looks so obvious. It does. Like, of, to, co- of course hindsight, you guys were going to be for yeah, sure. huge, in hindsight. right? But isn't that something? So they would only put you in the studio for a day or two at a time? You had to just... It was just so scattered, and yeah. and it, it just... We didn't even feel like that record was going to get finished. Wow. We just didn't feel like the label believed in the band. And so what we did is we said, well... Man, you know we have a local following. We we want to put out music, so we said, "Fuck it, we're gonna record all the songs that we know are not gonna be on Tragic Kingdom if it ever comes out, and we're just gonna go record them ourselves, pay for it ourselves, and put them out." Even though we're signed wow. to Interscope, right. we yeah, felt yeah. like they're not gonna give a shit, right? And and they didn't, and so we put out this thing called the Beacon Street Collection, which is essentially a B sides record to Tragic Kingdom, but it came out before. <laughs> wow! <laughs> to service yeah. like you know our goals and needs and right. the local fan base that we had at the time. That's rad. That's rad. something That's for the mailing rock, list man. party, right? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. And then when it took off, was it was it K Rock? What uh, what what got it started? Uh, I think it was the poor man that first played us. Okay, so I, it was local radio. Those. But was, was he right? still on K Rock then? It, man, I can't man? remember. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you ask him, he'll be he'll be the person to say I was the first guy to play. No doubt, maybe it was the first album because my, now my memory is getting a little sketchy. But um, yeah, I it just kind of slow rolled and it it, cut, it went from a couple stations to you know the entire format across the country and and so we just started hitting the, the road and doing all right, every yeah. interview we could do and yeah. try to introduce the country to the band. Yeah, for us, our big break was definitely K Rock took took um, come out and play and made it something. It was Jed the Fish actually played it for his catch of the day, mm. and it and we got on the phone immediately and called play that again. That was great. Play yeah, that again, yeah. like pretending we don't know who that was. It's not us, but <laughs> I remember that. But uh, but eventually, eventually, more and more people were calling, and it wasn't just us. But the thing about that, it wasn't like you know tweet your response now. It was calling, actually picking up the phone and dialing and calling yeah. back then. You know, a lot of kids yeah. don't know what that request is. Request line, remember that you know, request yeah. line. Oh yeah. Right. Furious Five yeah. at Nine. It was all they would take all the calls. Oh, that's what yeah. it was. Furious think, Five at Nine. That's what you, it was for us. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thanks for reminding. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a good one. I but love, we were that. trying to get our aunt to call and our moms to call yeah. and whoever you could think of. Oh, call, yeah. call and you know. You had me oh, call. You're like, dude, call. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, tell your friends, tell everyone to call. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And 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 luckily for us, it just kind of started it to work on its own, right? In in. Uh, well, the yeah, saying back then was, as goes K-Rock, so goes the country, yeah. right? So all the alternative uh, radio stations at the time would really look at K-Rock. From not, not you know, 100% of them, but most of them did. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they were definitely the trailblazers in that whole era, <clears throat> you know? So, yeah. yeah. We were talking, I don't want to, we were talking recently, and there was this one guy who just, yeah, I don't like the offspring. It's like no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't play us. I can't remember who, what market, or what radio. Station Some radio guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, I'm not gonna play them. There, there was <laughs> yeah. a there was okay. a guy at K Rock, and I don't know if it was a program director at the time or somebody. Uh, that was talking about our first album, and it, and was told they told the Interscope rep that it would take an act of God for no doubt to get on K-Rock. Oh, wow. wow. I'm not a religious guy, but I find that really funny. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you're still on (laughs) K-Rock. He's ahead of some label, I'm sure, now. Yeah. Ahead of a label now is like purgatory, isn't it, compared to what it used to be? Back then, records still made money back in the mid-'90s. What do they do now? I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, they're killing streaming. it on streaming. Streaming. Oh, okay. oh they're just hand over yeah. fist. Yeah. Right. Are they really? <laughs> yeah. What about the artists? Same. <laughs> not so much. Uh, yep. Take it up. I the can't ass. wait to get our songs on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Say thank you for signing us and take it up the ass. Actually, I yeah. think we probably get more plays on TikTok now that Taylor Swift isn't on TikTok anymore, right? Oh. A bunch of bands just got taken off TikTok, and Taylor was one of them. So. 
Okay. Why did they get I, taken off? I didn't know this. Uh, they weren't. They weren't paying. TikTok uh, wasn't paying enough. And universal. So it was, yeah. Right. It was oh, so the labels group, pulled right. them off. It was, yeah, oh. yeah, it was yeah. 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 I tried to do the math once. It was like point zero 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 whatever cents yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. like really really small. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, what can you do? Yeah. I guess. I mean, I like that it's getting played a lot. I mean, you know, we get played, streamed, probably way more than. The radio airplay. Our back egos in the day. are off the charts. It's our <laughs> bank accounts that need help. <laughs> We're huge on Spotify. Okay, <laughs> yeah. tons of likes, tons, tons of likes. Of likes. Yeah, tons of yeah. Likes. You should see our Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're killing it on Instagram. <laughs> Played with some other bands. You were talking about. You sat in with the start here in this room. Yeah, was... I did a few shows with them in, in um, like the mid to late two thousands. Um, I filled in for the Vandals a handful of times over the past 26 years. That's got to be fun. Those are some shoes to fill, man. Between yeah, you think? Josh Freese <laughs> and Brooks Wackerman, it's just so intimidating because those guys yeah. are just really special drummers. Um, but, you know, they're all friends, and, uh, you know, I, I love doing it. Yeah, I bet. I it's, bet. It's a good challenge, and I like to be challenged. So Those, it's... those guys, I've always said, uh, I think I said even just a little while ago, the Vandals are four of the, they're all out of their minds, crazy and and you know and unique thinkers, but they're all some of the brightest, wittiest guys. All four of them, brightest, oh, wittiest yeah. guys you'll ever meet. Yeah, um, they're stage. You know, always for great sure. stories, great great comebacks. It's just yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave's yeah. wit. You know? I saw a couple of those shows where you played them. I, th- I thought you were great. Man. It was really Thank good. You. You'd... Right on. Yeah. Held your own. It was all right. <laughs> all right. Sometimes I feel like I'm hanging by a thread, so that's nice to hear. <laughs> How was Bow Wow Wow? You played with Bow oh, Wow Wow. Oh, man, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was like in the mid-2000s. And, okay. You know, that was, as a teen, they were one of the bands that I was really into. Did you get to play the drums with the big horns coming off the bottom? So I had some drums built like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah it yeah, wasn't yeah. quite a horn, but it was more like an open marching shell with like a tooth thing on it. Um Man, now that that was also very challenging because the the thing about Bow Wow Wow is they had so the rhythm section of Bow Wow Wow was the original Ants for Adam and the okay. Ants on the, on the first record, and then they left Adam and they formed Bow Wow Wow, and so they came up with this whole Burundi groove between um, the drummer and the bass player, and it okay. and it sounded like two drummers because Lee Gorman, the bass player, was so percussive, an incredible musician. And when Adam went to replace them, it it, it didn't sound it, it didn't sound right. Yeah, so right? they got two drummers. <laughs> oh, oh, that's where that right. came from. Oh, right. And so, um, so playing with Bow Wow Wow was crazy because the 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 drum parts were so unique and so different. And um, I was kind of put through the grinder on that by Lee Gorman. He's like, I, whenever whenever I thought, okay, I got this, he's like, no, no, no. We're gonna go back Try and do it again yeah, and again okay. and yeah. again. Oh, you, know, you gotta really think about this Burundi rhythm in a certain way, and it's like, okay, that could be humbling, but you must have learned so much. It, from it that. made me better. Yeah, absolutely. And I got oh, to man, play with right. one of my hero bands. Yeah, so right. It was cool. Yeah, I saw them open up for the Pretenders at the Forum in God eighty three, eighty four, something like that. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah, so maybe eighty five. Wow, I'm pretty sure they were my first concert. Wow, 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 wow. At, at Irvine Meadows. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Do you remember back in the day in the early '80s? You probably don't remember this, but <laughs> <laughs> there was a whole thing about who's hotter, Madonna or Paula Abdul. Do you remember they were like neck and neck for a second, kind of? Yeah, um, <laughs> kind of like that. I don't really remember. Kind of like you, that, you two yeah. in Big Country. Which one's better, right? You know, you look, <laughs> okay. you look back in retrospect and realize one was much bigger than the other. But for a minute, it was who was hotter between the singer for Bow Wow Wow and Claire from Altered Images, right? Like we had, there were oh, there were two camps right. at, at the time. It's gotta be Annabelle. Yeah. Right? yeah and that Annabelle, Mohawk? That, yeah, that totally, was, come yeah, on. Yeah, that was yeah, my yeah. that was Well, she my also vote, had this sort of exotic look about her too. She was just stunning. She yeah. was stunning. We had friends know. that were way into Claire though. That was uh, Tyler and a couple of those other guys or whatever were in, on that those side. Dumb guys, so. those dumb guys we used to <laughs> hang out with. <laughs> Annabella was like 14 years old when she joined that band. Yeah, right? Yeah. Really that is young, yeah. what is so amazing, yeah. right? Just yeah. a kid. Yeah. So cool. So how long did you play with them? I think it was like two or three years. Wow, wow awesome! Right How yeah. fun! How fun! Yeah, touring and all that stuff. Yeah, we did. We went to the East Coast and um, and did mostly West Coast dates. So it wasn't like full blown tour, but 
Yeah. Now, didn't you, with no doubt, play an Adam Ant song on, what was it, Gilmore Girls or something? Didn't you do Stand oh, and Deliver for a TV show? Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. Gossip yeah. Girl. Yeah. How was that? How was that the we TV butchered thing? it pretty good. Did you? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, did you get to go, like, spend time on a TV set? What was that? Like, was that? Uh, yeah, there, there was some... There was some scene. I totally forget. You're bringing up all this shit I forgot about. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry if it's, if no, it's, it's a bad good. memory. Yeah. No, no, it's a fine memory. <laughs> okay, I just, good, I just good. can't remember <laughs> half the things we did. All right. Um, what, what hasn't this guy done? Jeez, come on. What a, what yeah. a career, man. I just collect stamps. Okay. <laughs> and run marathons. Yeah, yeah and PhDs. You try <laughs> licking them. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Degrees yeah. And, and flight school certifications. That's just self punishment. This is fun yeah. stuff here you've got going on. This is great. So, anyway, you uh, stand and deliver. Sorry, I, I, I think That's I interrupted okay. here. Oh yeah, we we uh, yeah we went and filmed the scene for the for the show, and um, that's pretty much it. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who's in Gossip Girl. I don't know that show. I don't either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so know much stuff. I heard the name. But. Now, we heard, a, we heard a rumor that, I guess it's more than a rumor now, that uh, you're going to be playing Coachella. Yes. Yeah. Which With is no doubt. Amazing. Yep. yep. First time uh, Another thing we've we, played in nine years. Wow. Another thing we can't do. Have Coachella. you guys ever have you ever done Coachella? <laughs> now, didn't Dream Car do Coachella? We did in 2017. We played right. um, uh, in one of the tents. And um, no doubt was supposed to do it. We were supposed to headline the first year they went to two weekends. Okay. And then I don't know when that was, but pulled out. And then it just kept being offered to us in one form or another. And for various reasons, we could never pull it together. So this finally is going to happen. It's going to be the first time we can go, rad. Go, I'm, go play. I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, I'm Thanks. stoked. Same here for all you guys. Yeah, that's that's rad. That's gonna oh, it's going to be huge. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be huge. Um, you're playing both weekends. Yeah. Um, is it just one night uh, uh, each weekend, or do you guys do multiple nights? Do you know? No, it, each band will play. It plays one night. One night. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's going to be amazing, dude. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Dusty. Very dusty. dusty. It can, I've never, it can I've be. I've never been. You know what? <clears throat> I would love to see you guys play. I'm not going to go to Coachella. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't blame you because it's it's become yeah. quite an. Uh, it's so big and getting in and out of that city has become yeah. quite a thing. I I love it out there. I love the desert. I have this fixation with the Salton Sea, which is nearby. I oh loved, yeah. I I, might, I took my son. We did it's the a, meth. It's we the did meth. it. Every, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the meth field. We did. Uh, have you seen the, the documentary about that? I stayed place? sober out there last time I was out there. Uh, the plagues and pleasures of yes. the Salton Sea. Yes. Wow. John Waters narrates it. I love it. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 So we stayed in Bombay Beach. I, we, me and my son, we got an Airbnb. It was a little. You did not. Too, yeah, it was a little <laughs> shipping container turned into like a it little really is a trailer. <laughs> and uh, dude, seriously. Well, then you go to then you go to Slab City, and oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I think they're cooking in there somewhere. There's like a bar in there you can go to. Of course and, there is. Yeah, but the the artwork is just it's amazing. There's so much creativity going on. I really meant the old creativity. Um, uh, but it's it's really bitching. It's a bitching place, and it's trippy. It's super trippy. So I, I do have a fixation with it. But but the the Coachella scene, all the people, and I get a little claustrophobic in cla- in crowds now. Interestingly, mm. um, how Which ironic! Is great, great for yeah. a musician. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't mind being up on stage. It's it's fun, you know. But when I'm surrounded by people, yeah, like but Disneyland's the same thing. I'll go with like in disguise with Disneyland. I can't handle it. It's like. People, the Orange County Fair. I can't walk around the fair. I can't mm. enjoy it. It's kind of weird. And you developed this over time. Yeah, yeah. I think there's always a little bit there, but but I developed it more. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, it yeah. It, it happens. I, I know. I used to just every show I'd go to, I was always in the pit, right? And then all of a sudden, I just <clears> didn't <throat> want people's body fluid on me. All of a sudden, like, <laughs> and, and I don't know when or why it happened, but. <laughs> Is there something like, about you that makes yeah, people want to throw their bodily yeah, fluid well, on you? Just sweat and, you know, <laughs> touching, like, yeah. I don't know, it, but it's kind of yeah. the same. Now, see, concerts, <laughs> kind of same, concerts yeah. I'll make an exception for. I prefer if I can get backstage, but yeah. <laughs> but I, and as long as there's music, I'll make the, the exception for it usually. You know, I really do enjoy that. So, wow. Well, Coachella's just gotten so huge, right? I mean, Almost it's too like, huge, yeah. Yeah. I think. yeah. Yeah, they expanded it, and they it because it, it, I used to go – for like the first 10 years and, it, and now it's like twice the size right. is it really yeah. wow oh i used to go to warp tour pretty much every year mm-hmm. uh, i love Same. that yeah so. 
Maybe one day we'll get the nod. I don't know. We haven't yeah. been uh, we haven't been invited yet. So I don't you've know. never just... done the Warp Tour? Oh no no sorry Coachella uh, uh, Coachella uh, 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 uh. yeah Coachella yeah. we uh, yeah Warp yeah. we did once I okay. don't know we're just gonna we'll keep on practicing. We did the whole tour once. We, we did a couple other shows. What year was that? Uh, Two thousand five. We did oh. the whole tour. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with Dropkick was on there and uh, yep. Uh, it was a big year actually. Yeah, that was then a really sevenfold. Good year. My Chemical Romance yeah. was on that. Oh wow. Oh, Andrew oh, WK boy. was out. I think yeah. he was. I don't think he was playing. Was he playing or was he just emceeing? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people on that one. We did the first year, and it was like because it was a new festival. It was very right. poorly attended. It wasn't, I was there. It wasn't I saw a thing you guys yet. play at, at really at Irvine. It was great. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Irvine one was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but yeah. The, some of the other West Coast. You know, there they were in venues that were way too big. Oh, like, all right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys played yeah. the gorge in, hallway in Seattle. It was it was the gorge and like George Washington, like way out. That's where you guys played. Were you too, already but... up in Seattle for the first warp uh, tour? No, I wasn't. But okay. I, I I had friends who went to it. So they were a oh, couple right. of the people that were there. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was it was I've been there I saw the second one, second warp tour. I think that was at the Kingdom. But. Talk about a big show, uh, Anaheim Stadium, right? The uh, K Rock. Uh, oh yeah, uh, the Weenie Roast. Roast. You guys did it, and uh, oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of heavy bands that year. STP, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, and Black Sabbath. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of great bands on that. Creed. Creed, Creed. That's right. Creed was on a, that show. <laughs> Lots of that's great right. bands and Creed. <laughs> 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 Creed, K Rock, like. If you look back at that, does that is that it? Does that work for you? The what? The the Creed at the K Rock thing? Yeah, Not really. But yeah, I just because yeah. they were on the rotating stage, so they were we were gonna rotate right after them. They put us on right after Creed, I guess. But right. I just remember it sounding. It was perfectly executed. I Did mean, we, it was played, had we made were, those shirts yet by then? The the Creed. <laughs> Everybody, oh, even Jesus yeah. hates Creed. <laughs> I had yeah, I had a buddy who made a funny line one time. He just said, "Even Jesus hates Creed," and I thought that's was that you? That's funny. I, I, I don't up think that? so. I think it was Ivan. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I don't you made remember. shirts, right? So we made shirts. I had <laughs> my guy <laughs> yeah. draw up cartoon Jesus going like this, and uh, you can find it online. Yeah, I'm sure. Jesus really going like this. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus going like this, and Scott Snap going like this. <laughs> uh, I know. Maybe we shouldn't be making fun anymore. We're supposed to be more mature now, but it was funny. It was it funny was, at the time. It wasn't yeah. nothing personal. It just it was just too good yeah, to pass you know. up, right? <laughs> well, did you see they they were in a Super Bowl commercial and they're kind of making fun of themselves? You okay. Know? Yeah. So they 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 know they know that you know they got poked yeah. a lot of fun at. So. Yeah. It's like Nickelback. You know, yeah. they got the similar kind of kind of hate, and I don't really get the the Nickelback stuff because I, I don't think. At least Chad didn't try to pretend to be Jesus as much, right? <laughs> you know, so right, just, you know, uh, I kind of uh, like Nickelback. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nickelback, there, I said they, it. I they, like Nickelback. They made shirts too that said like it was something like if you you either like Nickelback or you're lying or something like that, and sold them, oh, that's which is kind of funny. <laughs> that's pretty uh, clever. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's funny. So. Yeah. But, oh man! Well, yeah. I wanted to sell these shirts, and I called our manager Jim, your guy's manager as well. And he goes, no, you can't do that. I go, well, what do you mean? Come on, it's harmless. And he goes, I'd sue you. <laughs> if, if it was my band, I'd sue you. Like, all right, all right. So it was just something we made, I don't know, 50 of them or 100 and just kind of gave them out. But Oh, you it, never sold okay. No, I never sold them, but it kind of like you can find them out there. I think other people have made them, yeah. maybe. I've still got one. I, I still have one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. I'm sure Donnie Spada still has his. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Donnie. Uh, yeah. Love that guy. Donnie was uh, our, our guitar tech for a long time. You guys' mm -hmm. guitar tech for a long time. Just a sweetheart and a funny guy. Oh, yeah. Such a funny guy. Oh, he was like in our intermission. He's he's kind of the heavyset guy in a G-string during like Also on a shirt. <laughs> so, yeah, also on a shirt. And we had a shirt with uh, Donnie. So tell me, obviously, you, you're... you're the, no doubt has been on a long hiatus. So, how is that when you get invited to this huge festival and like what kind of preparation? Like, how is that a big deal to get the band back together and rehearse? It, and it is because, um, you know, well, if Coachella has their already built in production and screens and lights, but we're going to be bringing in a lot of extra production. And, you know, to get that together by April when we haven't been on the ro road and we don't have a rolling right. rig, um, or crew to put all this together in a short amount of time is going to be quite a thing. Um, yeah. Cause we can't just like do the throw and go. We got to right, do right. some serious preparation. Yep. Um, and um, it's kind of like preparing for a full production tour for just 
two, two shows. For one two show. Shows. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. We just um, we got new guitar rigs made up um, that we just got back like last week, and so we decided to set up practice and try them out. And it was freaking. It took us like three days to get the guitars together, right? Because mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, that doesn't sound right, and you got different sounds on different right. songs, and like it was a lot. And I'm saying that's just for the guitar, so I can't imagine that wasn't what it, you're you know doing. video or set, you know, or anything. Yeah, that was just guitar sounds. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine you probably you're not just going to play the set list. It's got to be there's going to be some there's some kind of show. I'm sure, right? So you got to figure out what those elements are. Yeah, there's 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 a lot to figure out, and what is it? February, mid February, and we got to two months get this thing together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a long time, but it doesn't feel like it. It goes yeah. fast. Uh, yeah, yeah, it goes fast. Wow. Well, I bet playing the songs will come back. You know. Yeah. It, it, well, Tom, Tony, and myself were already getting together at my house and um and just kind of getting the dust off, right, or the rust off, as they say, and um, so that you know by the time we all get together with the crew and rest of the band you know will be solid yeah yeah for sure that's like muscle memory some of that right mm-hmm. i'm sure yeah. yeah yeah but everyone's a little older <laughs> <laughs> muscles are a little more sore <laughs> yeah <laughs> or in like you know running the set like multiple times a day is probably not in the cards <laughs> right right it's probably yeah, run yeah. it once yeah. each yeah, yeah, day yeah, when you're fresh yeah, yeah. stamina is not there and you know i've had like wrist surgery and rotator cuff problems oh, and geez. you know yeah, yeah kind of kind of a broken down middle-aged man yeah yeah oh never we all feel never, that. <laughs> never yeah. admit that no yeah. Dexter, yeah. Dexter's still running marathons yeah. <laughs> half, 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 half half you look marathon. you look like it you look good oh, looking thank tight. you thank you yeah yeah he has been he's been so, running uh, and doing the what half iron man competition so half a marathon swimming and i got right. into the triathlon thing you know i used to run forever and then your knees start hurting as you get older right and i had to stop running so what I did, I just switched to this uh, because you kind of spread it out. A little run, a little swim, a little bike and mm-hmm. stuff, and it gives you lots of cardio, but it doesn't trash your knees so much. So yeah, it's worked for me. Good. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Are you ready in case you got uh, invited to the Super Bowl? Like Usher ripping his shirt off, you got to look good. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know? right. I'm just he, he was ripped, dude. He yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just Jesus getting ready for that Coachella invite. Yeah. One day, Coachella. One day. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. The Super Bowl just happened. Um, you yep. guys played the Super Bowl once, but didn't you guys play the beginning? You didn't play the halftime show, or did you we play did. halftime? You did play the halftime. We show. played halftime in two thousand three. I okay. think it wow. was. Yeah. Awesome. How was that the experience? Wow, that's a different thing. Yeah, I, I mean, bet. it's such yeah. a this talk about a lot of production or things to navigate through. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah. Because they put the stage together, you know, within a matter of. A few minutes. Yeah, they roll it out there, and it's right. like you just—you got to get this thing in, in a matter of time. And when we were exiting the field, the the kicking squad was already doing their practice kicks, and so like, you know, I'm going through the end zone, and this fucking football comes whizzing by my head because they're oh, doing practice man. kicks Whoa, right from midfield. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's how seamless or wow. how tight the the, right. the 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 time frame is. But what a rush! I mean. That's like and you have the to largest. Go, you have to be, yeah, there's no, you have to go. Like, you can't go, wait, I, I got to go to the bathroom. Like, yeah. you can at your own show if you have to, but you can't yeah. do that there. Like, no. Can't or were you wearing late. a diaper? Can't or were you wearing late. a diaper at the time? Oh, so <laughs> I was warned that if I do anything fucked up like that at the Super Bowl, they're, yeah. they're, they're, that A, I won't be on camera and they might. Causes problems. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to play in front of you know eight hundred million people, yeah, yeah that's, you that can't is wear the, a diaper. the biggest. Like, all right, audience. I'll put I'll put a shirt on and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had to play it straight. Wear the diaper I'll, under the clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Didn't one of didn't a member of P Funk uh, threaten to sue you to yes. stop to stop wearing a diaper? He claimed he had trademarked the diaper. Yeah, that is accurate. Yeah, so <laughs> so I, I I I didn't steal it from him, but I, I, yeah, I used to wear a diaper on stage and piss in it and chuck it in the audience and just you know, <laughs> <laughs> just, wow. just just all things wrong, right? Right. Yeah. And we love you. Have your kids we seen love the you video? here. Have your kids seen the video of you doing this? I don't think it's on video because okay, this is good. like yeah, late nineties. Yeah, no phones, but yeah. Um, okay. But um, so. And then, oh, and then I did it um, 
at the MTV Music Awards. We pre- oh, presented right, an right. award, and I remember um, seeing that. I remember watching that on and TV. And then I got the letter from the management, um, okay, the guitar player saying this is his thing, and <laughs> you, this is a cease and desist. You 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 How can't funny. be stealing his his idea. And I said, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. He was doing it in the seventies. Um, that's not where I got it, but fair right, enough. right, so right. So I, I just stopped doing it. Yeah, yeah. Fair I, enough. I, I did it run its course anyway. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 yeah. You took the joke pretty far. I think the MTV Awards that was kind of your crowning achievement, pretty much. Anyways, no that's pun a, intended. Mic drop. Thank no you. pun intended. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, life goals. Yeah. So, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> that's awesome. Jeez. Wow. Who would have thought that? If anything, I stole. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, if no, anything, no. I stole like a lot of my antics from your next guest, Warren. Oh right, <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. Just whipping yeah, your yeah, dick yeah. out on stage. And... <laughs> oh my god, he's yeah. so, Warren is another so whole genius. different animal. Yeah, yeah. and it's... out of his mind, completely out of his yeah. mind, in, in, in all the right ways. In the good, yeah, yeah. in the best way. Yeah, uh, I love that guy. Ditto. So funny, man. So funny. So tell us about some of the bands that you've been playing with more recently, and with Dream Car we mentioned. Um, well, you got shows coming up with Dream Car too, though at the this pretty cool festival. Um, yeah, it's a it's an eighties festival, which is kind of weird because we're not from the eighties. I but, know, right? But, but it's you the sound, sound like of the you record are. we made. You I sound guess. Like you are. Yeah, um, yeah. It's called Cruel World in Pasadena. That's right, the Cruel World Festival. In, uh, yeah, in May. Awesome. Yeah, that should be fun. Hopefully, they have better weather. Although they pulled it off, they, but they had to do like an extra day to because yeah, the rain, I was right? there with my daughter. Um, there was lightning, and yeah. so Iggy Pops. Set got cut short, and Susie and didn't Susie's, go on, so yeah. she came back the next night. And That's played. great. That was great. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm stoked to be playing because Dreamcar hasn't played in seven years. So to answer your yeah. question, I haven't been in a live band actively for seven years and nine years. Wow. Um, except for the occasional fell in with the Vandals or whomever. Um, I've been mostly be- been playing on records, and most of that's from my own recording studio at home. And um, I, I've become quite a studio rat, actually, just mixing records, engineering records, producing records, scoring films with, right. with a partner oh, cool. of mine named uh, Todd Foreman. You guys might know him. He played sax and sublime back in the day in the 40 Ounces of Freedom days. Okay. Okay. And then he stopped playing with them to go to Harvard, <clears throat> and then oh. he's now – he's a. He's a doctor. He's a, so he's a slouch. He didn't want to. Re- yeah. get, he didn't want to get a real job. He went back to school yeah. instead. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> wait for that TikTok money. <laughs> <laughs> what did he get his degree in at Harvard? So he's a he's a he's a doctor, and so he runs a Medical family practice. Yeah, he runs oh, a family really? wow. practice right. in Orange wow. County, and then comes over to my and, place, and, and we does, just yeah. we just hit it as a, know, know, like a production James. team. He's like our our old drummer is uh is a doctor. He's an oncological surgeon. That was the last uh, uh podcast we released, and uh, and he has this crazy weird kind of Devo esque uh, residence sort of uh, music project called uh, Bunko. Uh, um, yeah, Bunko. Bunko. And Bunko. Yeah. That's right. That's funny. How funny. I always thought doctors I, I, making I'm, medicine. I mean, making music. Fascinated, and amazed by people who do soundtracks because it's not like. A song structure necessarily, right? It's and I, I don't know where you even come up with. Where do you start doing a so a score? That that's kind of what I wondered because it was never a goal of mine to do this and and, and um, to make a long story bearable. I mean, uh, a friend of mine who owns a production company asked us if we would take on a film, Todd and I. So we said, yeah, we'll go for it. And at first, I thought it was just going to be a couple songs. And then we ended up doing the entire movie. Oh wow! And music supervising it, and and it was quite a learning curve. And we loved it because, God. and the process we took and we've been taking ever since is we will start to, I mean, we'll talk to the director, get a vibe of what they're looking for. In general, uh, senses, and then we read the script and we'll start sketching ideas. And so Todd plays keyboard and sax. And I play a little guitar and, and and the drums, and so we'll start to craft like little ideas after reading the script, and then once we start to see the footage of the film come in, then we'll start um, applying what we sketched out to see if it works at all in the scenes, and then show the director, and he'll say or she'll say yes, no, yes, no, and we'll and then we um, take their their direction and start 
scoring directly to the scenes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So some of the stuff we had done to script will get used, and then we right. just expand on that to real footage. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. To write just to a script is really interesting, right? Like, and like you said, it's not a right. song. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Except for yeah. the stuff we license. You're just kind of going for the mood, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's just a keyboard, or sometimes it's like I get on an electronic drum set and make this weird little percussive loop, or, you know, I line up a bunch of pedals, pull out a guitar, and just start vibing, you know? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Do you, and you can get as weird as you want because it's not, you're not crafting a song for the radio. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For our studio nerds out there, are there any, uh, uh, like particular things you go to for for your sound, uh, your plugins, anything like that that you have a oh, like a man. favorite or a go to, or is well, it just kind of whatever? I mean, I I'm a fan of outboard gear, so uh-huh. I have a SSL console and a bunch of rack of commercial studio gear um, that I prefer. But as far as the plugins go, I mean, Universal Audio probably has the best lineup of plugins, but I mean. You guys probably know this. There's so many good makers now of plugins. Right. Like that 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 menu is endless. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine going to his home studio? It's got gold all over the walls. It's gilded. It's you know. <laughs> Use <laughs> diapers in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I want to see that place. Do you work uh, with local bands as well? A little bit of everything. Yes. Producing. So what are some oh, good yeah. local bands? coming up um so there was this band from long beach called strawberry army um that's fronted by these two twin girls okay um there's another band we're working with right now called the side chicks um and you know so a lot of times we'll work with unsigned bands and we'll put their music in the movie like we'll oh, license wow. songs right from oh, these cool. bands we work with sometimes, oh, cool. especially for the lower budge movies. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's super so cool. It's, yeah. It's a good platform for them to, you know. Yeah. Totally. Get us totally. to film and. That's rad. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm always looking for local bands to go see. So Side Chicks and Strawberry Army. I'm yeah. Check them out. Cool. Are we golfing? I don't golf anymore. Really? At all? Yeah. Oh, I stopped, wow. Well, I stopped playing competitively in 2018, and, and once that happened, I just realized uh, I was just in the grind for all the wrong reasons, and I don't. I stopped practicing and stopped playing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was clearly burnt out, and, um, but in addition to that, I had, like, wrist surgery in 2021, and... Um, What's harder on the wrist, golfing or playing drums? Uh, probably golfing. Really? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would have thought that would have gone the other way. Yeah. 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 Well, it's because when the club makes impact, you're you're making impact with the ground with such force because oh, right, you're using right. all the torque that of your body. Sense. Whereas with drums, you know, head. yeah, it, you're kind of just letting the weight of the stick do its thing. Yeah. Right. Um, but man, that that kind of sucked. To be honest with you, to like go through months and months, actually 18 months of physical therapy. Oh, I bet. Uh, oh, yeah. To be able to just play <clears throat> drums again without being excruciating pain. Yeah. It was, it was a bum out. Oh, man. man. Yeah. You're like the most avid golfer that I know. Yeah. I guess. So I'm surprised to hear that you've um, could you, not So Ken all, Casey but... from from uh, uh, Dropkick Murphys, could you kick his ass in, in golf <laughs> back in the day? Well, Did you I, ever play I, with Ken? I, I didn't, but, oh, okay. but I was, when I was playing – competitively and I was trying to get as good as I possibly could. I was really giving it a go. Um, I was playing city championships and then sometimes I would play mini tour stuff. Okay. So, and I, I I got as low as a plus 1.5 handicap. So I don't know where he was at, but that's where I was at. I think you could kick Ken's ass. I don't know. I just like saying that. He, he, he you know, he, he loves. Oh, he's, he's he's a talker, Boston he's guy. He's a pro so here, start, pro yeah. guy here. So, yeah. so, so, you know. Well, want to be pro guy. Uh, yeah. oh, everyone I've talked to that's golfed with you said like, no, no, that guy can play. He's yeah, you, you were no slouch. So well, the word was. Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't realize it was so fucking hard because you, you you look at some of these golfers on to be the best of the best. They're fucking sixty five overweight. Like I'm like. They're not. How are these guys athletic? So I'm. I'm John Daly was my hero. Oh no, he's much. great. No, no, I think he's. I love it. You know, 
I would always play as him on the on the like the the you know Game Boy the Golf PGA, or PlayStation yeah, for Golf sure. or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, so many of them are just like game. they look out of shape. They look like they just show up. You know, like. I, I mean, I can't. Not golf. most of them. Most of them look like they're in pretty. I was going to say, isn't it more that know. the guys are super in shape now? The top really? guys, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Clearly, you, I don't watch golf, <laughs> so yeah, it could take its toll on your body. Maybe, maybe you're thinking of bowling. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of curling. <laughs> you know, I, people in the Olympic, the best Olympic, they're fucking, they're out there pregnant and they're in the Olympics. You know, like I'm, oh, really, okay. <laughs> You know, sometimes big guys really know how to use their bodies efficiently. Cause like when I watch really, really big guys play drums and they make it look effortless, like they're, they're, cause you know, playing drums for an hour and a half can be taxing unless, right. unless you're just playing jazz or, you know, kind of holding back. But you see big guys really go for it. They just, they just know how to use their body efficiently. Yep. Maybe it can that's happen. What I just got to. Like you. I just got to go for it. Like like you. Go for it. <laughs> Using you know, your body efficiently. Competitive eating or he something, He can efficiently, you know? yeah, eat some, <laughs> eat some double doubles and, <laughs> and drink some truly yeah. seltzers. At, 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 uh, well, what, at Dexter's party, I had uh, one of his backyard parties, you know, for Nitro or whatever. I, they had the In-N-Out truck, and I ate eight mm. double doubles. Eight was, double doubles. Eight That's double the record. Doubles. Eight yeah. double doubles. Yeah. 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 Man, they're free, so you kept on going back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Until they cut me on. They're... <laughs> but, yeah. Those back your parties were fun, cool. by the way. Those uh, Halloween ones you had? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Back in the day, a long That's time ago. Right. That was so so cool. So crazy who would who would show up, you know? Friends of friends, right? So yeah. it might be, I don't know, Exene showed up Exene once. And it was like, yeah, that's rad. You know, yeah. yeah. yeah so it was, cool. th those parties were top notch, man. That's where I first got to know Steve Soto, um, hanging out at one of, the, one of the parties and got to talking to him. Yeah. So rest yeah, in yeah, peace. Yeah, Steve. all those guys. Yeah. Love that guy. Oh, man. Now, tomorrow is your wedding anniversary. Right. Tomorrow's my wedding anniversary. Oh. Twenty six years. Wow. Twenty six yeah. years. You've and got a, You've got quite quite some time. Twenty with your wife. Four. Twenty four years. Twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. Half a century yeah. between the two of you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Easy. All right. Bunch yeah. of old married guys. You've been married a long time now, right? Yeah, I've been married since ninety two. So that's uh, twenty seven years. Something. 27 years? That's way more than that. 92. Like 30 wow. No, 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 96. We've been together since 92. I was going to say. <laughs> I, was gonna say. <laughs> you, you know, the, 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 I, I actually have a barcode. Yeah, we got married matching when Ignition came out? Yeah, we got okay. matching barcodes when we got married. So I actually have her tattooed on my arm, so I don't forget. February 92 is when we got together, and 96 is when we got married. All so, right. Yeah, so it, it has been 27 years married. I didn't forget. Yeah. I didn't wow. even have to look at my barcode. So, <laughs> so there, out, out there, so there is a woman out there who has put up with this guy for 31 years, yeah. right? Can you believe that? Yeah. That's what was that thing you posted on Instagram the other day? Is oh, uh, every time says uh, any time somebody t says you're a, a you, you're, you're lucky. a lucky man. Yeah, you're, you're a lucky, lucky man. man. They just mean they want to fuck your wife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the polite yeah. way of saying I want to fuck your wife. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I know. I know about There's that. Truth of that. Yeah. Uh, no, our better halves, right? Yeah. Been, you know. Yep. Well, it's the, the one nice thing about uh, being together so long, like when she like says, "Why do you do that?" I'm like, "You fucking knew that." There's no surprises. You knew all of this <laughs> yeah. a long time ago. You know, so right. you can't, yeah. don't try to change me now. Right. Or, you yeah. know, you're, you're too loud. It's not oh, like really? you just met me. Yeah, you're too yeah. loud. Yeah. She, oh, really? yeah, she told me you're, you're too loud. loud. <laughs> really? Oh, okay, that's not nothing new. You've right. known this since yeah. we were yeah. friends in high school. Uh, you can so, probably uh, fart whenever you want now, yeah. right? You know, I got the back. green light to just do anything at this point, right? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if there's like a wish that, like, okay, well, he's younger now, and maybe that part of him will just fade as he matures. Because, yeah. like, so my wife's sober, and she was when we first started dating, and I am the opposite of that. And I love drinking. <laughs> and, yeah. and she I'm knew that. Sure. And I think she keeps waiting for like to me to go like, hey, like. What part of that is gonna like <laughs> grow up a little bit? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I my don't wife, know. my wife it feels was, too good. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. <laughs> my wife was sober when I met her too, but she's not anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, she you dragged her down. Kind of you dragged her down. Way. Yeah, yeah. Went the other way. But yeah. I think she still kind of keeps waiting for me to, you know, to. So, it's just similar. She's like, when are you gonna be done with that? I'm like, oh, I don't ever want to be fully done with that. I'll take breaks. <laughs> yeah. my, Bert, my, the comedian Bert Kreischer says. Because I love drinking. I love drinking so much that I'm going to do whatever it takes to be able to do it 
You know, I'll take breaks. I'll do whatever I need to do. I, I want to drink the rest of my life. That's right. <laughs> I love it that. It is so yeah. much fun. Yeah. He says, give that like, up for good? No way. Yeah. Yeah. He says, take hey, breaks, you want to go out to brunch? Bottomless mimosas. You know that's going to be a great day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife likes when I yeah. drink, actually. I know yeah. a lot of people, they get, you know. Right. The wife might get bummed out because the guy gets sloppy or whatever, but well, she I prefers think, it. Yeah, and I and when I've seen you drink, I think you're the same way. We, I'm a happy drunk. I like. I don't. I don't get angry. I don't get. I don't get physical. I don't get violent. You know, upset. I. I like. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm in my happy. It's place. a happy drunk. You know? yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers. You to just that. get a little bit louder, but you're the yeah. same way. Well, imagine that even louder. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, well, we've experienced. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. good. All right. You consider yourself a happy drunk? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, I'm way, well, it's weird to ju- self-judge when you're drinking, but um, from what others have told me, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm you're much w- more sociable, more fun to be around. Um, you know, of course, if it goes too far, it could go the other way, I guess. But um, I, 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 I'm too serious if I'm, like, not having a drink here and there. Right, you know, yeah, yeah, too yeah. too focused, too serious, too driven, and right. you know, um, it's time does it all work and no beer makes Homer something something <laughs> go crazy? Uh, yeah, it's like take the stick out of the ass. Yeah, Let's go here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, beer is proof that God wants man to be happy. Right, that's yeah. Benjamin right. Franklin. Yeah. That, that yeah. whole thing, right? Yeah. Mark I, Twain I, said, "Of the demonstrably wise, there are but two. There are those who." Keep their facilities atrophied with drink, and those who commit suicide outright and end the farce. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That's, that's, that's dark, good. but yeah. I like the self-assessment, yeah. though. You know, when I drink, I am funny as fuck, man. I'm great. I'm yeah, hilarious. Right. I am talented. I play better. You know, <laughs> there's absolutely no happier, no downside at all. Yeah. Have you guys ever got a stage where you're too drunk and you're going and you realize, oh shit, I'm too fucked up and I've got to hang on now? Oh yeah. Long time ago for me. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been a while, but I usually just have fun. Like I've I've never been to the point where like there was one time when I was like, oh, I was pretty embarrassed when we played with uh, L Seven in Rennes, France, early on. Okay, and I heard like tape. They had tape, like a board tape of it. I was like, oh, <laughs> God. That was pretty. That was pretty bad. Yeah, we're usually just trying to hang on anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me ex- let's t- tell it from a different angle. So because. The drummers are the ones driving the train. They should be. Oh, yeah. They should yeah. be. Yeah. It is terrifying to be in that position. And it happened twice. And I remember them both distinctively. One was in 2003, and the other one was like 96 or 7. And I remember <laughs> thinking, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Oh, and man. I remember just hanging on and saying, okay, next song, just get through it. Next song, get through it. Just watching that set list and counting it down. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay, because yeah. because of, if because if the wheels fall off for me, right. the rest of the band's toast. Yeah, that's the, the whole train goes off the track. That's yeah. true, yeah. huh? Yeah. Like, that's I'm just going to piss my diaper. Oh, it's shit, different. I'm not wearing a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. I knew there was a reason. God damn it today. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, we used to have this... Um, pea bucket or i had a pea bucket it was like one of those oversized kentucky fried chicken buckets and it would be sitting behind me because i'm pissing in it the whole way through the show in between songs right and at some point the rest of the band got wind of it and they saw it and so they started using it too oh no and so my tech had to get a second one because it would get filled to the top oh. with this. Your, your drum tech must have loved you. Yeah, Fuck really. It. He yeah. hated it so much. He's <laughs> like, I can't believe I have to carry this massive piss bucket. Oh, man. Now two of them out every yeah. night. Oh, funny. Wow, there you go. See? Yeah. All these Once I hit the bucket. stage, I think I stage fright. I can't I can't pee. I couldn't pee in, in between a song. Every once in a while, like, like if you're doing Gone Away acoustic, I have time to go run to the to the bathroom. But... I, it's stage fright keeps me from peeing. Oh, yeah. and you can build in bathroom breaks in your show if you want to, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's part of why I really don't drink before the show or drink very much because yeah. I don't want to have to pee because mm. I can't. I don't have a bucket next to my mic yeah. stand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah. A new Something trick. To think about. Antic. Yeah. Ca- catheter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, man. Hot water bottle taped to your ankle. Uh. Right. <laughs> 
Is there anything else you want to talk about that we've left out or? Man, I feel like we covered a, quite a bit. A of lot. It. Yeah. A lot. It's just amazing. You forget about all the connections over the years that we've had together with our bands and just, mm-hmm. you know, living by each other and stuff. Right. And it's so cool. I've always cool. just kind of been curious because you guys did come up through the punk scene, right? Like I, I remember seeing No Doubt at the Ice House with a bunch of punk bands. I mean, was there any times where like No Doubt really wasn't kind of? I mean, Offspring fit in pretty good with the punk scene, but No Doubt kind of didn't. Uh, but I mean, you guys were always my wife's favorite band, right? Like, but, <laughs> but I mean, were there ever any times where there was like it was just awkward? Fair question. Um, I think because of the the styles that we were kind of melding together, especially in the early days, we kind of were able to fit in with a lot of different yeah. bills. And so, yeah, we did play a lot of punk shows and we opened for a lot of punk bands. Um, but then there were times where we were playing with other bands that and a lot of them were one-offs where, you know, they were kind of on – more pop leaning side of K rock bands, yeah. type bands. Right. And it really didn't matter. You know, we, but I mean, our early stuff, we had a little bit of, you know, fast stuff. And because the, the ska scene, which we were part of in the really early days, and the punk <clears throat> stuff, it kind of, you could play it, together. It blended, yeah. Right. It blended. Yeah, sure. And um, it's still I, that way. I yeah. Mean, still, yeah. You know, and, play and, with and I remember um, we opened for Bad Religion up in Berkeley once. And the first song we played was we played in the dark. And all the punk Bad Religion fans were like, fuck you guys. When the lights come on, you guys are, you guys are fags. And yeah. just all the names <laughs> all are, the yeah. are coming yeah. at yeah. us. But then by like the third or fourth song, we had them. Yeah, because we had enough fast songs back then, <laughs> yeah. where in in the pit was going, and that was usually the case. We didn't have a hard time getting punk fans to get into it. Yeah, right. Um, even though we weren't a punk band. Yeah, yeah. All right, on. What was the worst pairing? Do you remember like playing with a band going, "Oh, this is awful. We shouldn't have. We shouldn't have played this." Offspring. Man, that's a really good question. I <clears throat> there nothing, was this one band that we played with, and they um, they had their banner that was self made banner, the spray paint called "Sons of Satan." Yeah, <laughs> and this is somewhere in Texas, and um, and I, we had we didn't have songs on the radio yet, so it was like a small club, and. Their 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 music was super heavy. It was kind of it was metal, and it didn't fit at all. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be weird. Yeah, yeah. What do you have somebody in mind? Have no, we, I was just wondering. But we've we've had with shows us, that were kind of weird. There was that for one sure. show with uh, Hard Stance, Zach's first band, Zach De La Rocha's first band, and there was a band that played in between who was friends with the guy who owned the club. It wasn't the promoter? The promoter, you know, booked a bunch of straight edge hardcore. Yeah punk bands talk about not fitting in so you know yeah. we're like kind of a regular <clears throat> punk band but, but you know we like we drink beer and stuff we had long so hair we, at the time too we didn't have we those, had long hair those, so you know, when we would head. get on these bills with um with straight edge bands that was what oh, was yeah. really weird <laughs> right yeah. it was like yeah i thought that band was called inside out or something like that but um i thought it was hard stance but it, it could have been something could, else i think and, did, i can't remember the names of the bands that played that time and it wasn't like I don't remember them giving us shit necessarily. Oh, they directly. Did. Oh, did oh, they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there was. It was funny because the the the, he- the the total. I was trying to be diplomatic here. Yeah. Okay. Like the heavy metal band or or whatever classic rock band that played before us. Like the, the singer was was channeling uh, Robert Plant for sure. He had his shirt unbuttoned, his you know golden curly locks, and and they were like kind of laughing. All, all the hardcore guys were laughing. At them, but laughing with them as well, kind of playing with them. And then we take the stage, and they're calling us fucking hippies and going out. <laughs> and then we started playing. And about three songs into it, they shut up. And eventually, I think Zach came up and said, hey, man, I'm sorry. We were we were dicks. And I think he uh, came up okay. and apologized for it at least. But all right. but like I said, like four or five songs into it, they, they came around and they, yeah. all right, this is not what we thought it was going to be. I think they thought we were going to be a worse version of that classic rock band. Yeah. And we were just a... And and the audiences too, right? I think like when you you're playing a show with a, a hardcore band or whatever, the more 
extreme the music the more the audience kind of gets like that too oh, and like sure, yeah, they yeah. don't want you to deviate from what they're there for right so when they see you play and you got long hair and you're not exactly hardcore like they are they're very standoffish yeah. at least at first right my memory of this gig is it was mostly the other bands that were watching all the bands <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of <laughs> audience members it, did you ever have yeah. shows like that back oh, in the yeah. day yeah oh, yeah. yeah it's just yeah five oh, page man. oxford mississippi okay. never forget it where was it <laughs> Oxford, Mississippi. Five? five? Five paid at the door. Wow. And then we brought more people with us than actual paid members from the, yeah. the we, that we met in the hotel. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> or the motel. Um, I, I remember yeah. six in New Jersey once. Does that ring a bell? Six? To you, oh, six man. people yeah. at the show. And it was like, hmm. <laughs> okay. I remember playing a VFW hall where we just... We, there was a, a keg left unattended, and we just were filling up everything we could with all the beer. <laughs> um, there, and the there good, was nobody there. It was just the bands, just the other bands. There. Yeah, but the good was, old days. That would have been that would have been ninety, uh, no eighty nine. Our very first cross country tour, I think, the one okay. in the pickup truck. Could have been the one truck. in the van. Might have been the one in the van in ninety. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think it's funny when bands talk about how. Well, yeah, when we first started, there was only 10 people there. And we're like, well, that was our story for 10 years. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. like the first year. And it was really it was really nothing. Like, seriously, I, I don't yeah. think we could draw more than maybe 50 people until yeah. until Smash came out, basically. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Re I, I remember one show in particular, and it was, it was uh, Gutter Mouth Pennywise and you guys, Copacetic Cafe. And the place was so fucking packed. The promoter like, wanted us to go on last. You guys went and we're on like, last. Really? Okay, that's cool. You know. Yeah. But no, it wasn't because <laughs> dude, Pennywise. <laughs> Pennywise. They, they're going after Pennywise, and the place just emptied out. I remember, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess the pit is me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was so. I still have nightmares. Like we'll be playing our high school's Lyceum, and we empty it out. You know, <laughs> school <laughs> gymnasium, and it's empty. We the people keep leaving. <laughs> I still have that yeah. recurring nightmare. Yeah, dreams about a show going bad yeah. or nobody showing up. Yeah. I think I think I have those from time to time. I don't know. But. Yeah. <laughs> you just reminded me of something, and I totally <laughs> forgot about this. So we had that there was one show we played. It wasn't with other bands. It was just us, and it was, a, a, it was in San Diego at, at a convention center room with Australian exchange students. And, oh and we had had... Um, uh, a pretty good history of like winning over people. Our track record was good. This night, there was probably 150 people there, and they were there for their function. We just happened to be the band that was playing, and we start playing, and they and and they come forward, and most of them actually turned around and went back to their <laughs> back back of the room to have to do to have conversations and do. You know, go back to their oh social gathering. God. Oh my it was God. a total opposite effect. Oh, that's <laughs> awful. Yeah, we we had a similar thing. We played a co-op up in Berkeley, um, and it's dinner time, and they, like they would just I don't know they pay a band to come in and play for dinner time, and all these students are coming through, getting their food, sitting down at tables, eating and clinking, and and you just hear the cutlery, and we're up there rocking, trying to put on this show <laughs> to the sound of silverware. Yeah, yeah, people <laughs> sitting eating. It was all oh, the most uncomfortable show that anyway was, done that ever. Was really bad. <laughs> yeah, really bad. But That's funny. oh my god. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> we went. We went from there, and then we played some uh, other backyard party there with I think with the In Saints. Remember the girl from the In Saints peeing on the audience? And yes. Stuff? Yeah. <laughs> that was the second um, show of the day. Yeah. How does she yeah. do that? I. She I just know, man. She yeah, lift up her skirt, skirt, lift up her skirt. Yeah, yeah. She can kind of point it, make it go outward. She, yeah, yeah. It was, it was she impressive. Goes, she goes, "I got something for you," and <laughs> went right on. The <laughs> I'll still remember that quote because it's like, <laughs> "Oh my god, I'm shocked." This is yeah. amazing. Urethra control. Yeah. yeah, she was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, hopefully, P Funk doesn't have a uh, so, a patent on that either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> gonna get her in trouble yeah. now. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's gonna so, get a letter. So our day got better. Our day got better. Put it yeah. that way. <laughs> well, dude, it's so been so great to have you here. Thank, Thank you yeah. very dude, much, thanks man. Thanks for joining us, man. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Really, come back and see us again very sometime. Cool. All right. We'll see you. Good luck talking to Warren. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna <laughs> be fun. He's yeah, really yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. He's a fun guy. Those two will go at it, and we'll just. Sit here and drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ask for clarification every so often. <laughs>